Okay. All right. All praise to the Most High. So tonight's topic is called the Lord sitting on His throne. The Lord sitting on His throne. So this class is, is actually um, it's from it's based on the questions that we have because I hear a lot of our brothers and sisters they be asking, "Where is God now? Where is the Lord?" They be asking stuff like that. Where is God now? Where is He sitting? Where is He at? We be, we, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of these questions coming up. In Midland, I had the same question. Okay. It keeps coming up. Sentin, I hear that a lot in Sentin. Okay. Pretoria, I had the same question. Where is God now? Now, watch this. I'm going to go over a little bit of history. Okay. Give me the book of First Kings. Okay. First Kings 22, verse 1. Let's start this. First Kings chapter 22, verse 1. I'm going to touch on a little bit of history and then. I'll be going into the class. So pay attention. All right. First Kings chapter 22, verse 1. Go ahead. And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. The day is going to be explained in verse 2. So it says they continued what? They continued three years without war between what? Syria and Israel. Next verse. Go ahead. Verse 2. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. So now the day is what we're reading. They are mentioning one of the day is the king of Judah, Jehoshaphat. So Jehoshaphat came to visit the king of Israel. Okay. Because there was no war between what? Between Israel and Syria for three years. Now it says after three years. Now this is three years later. Now the king of Israel is going to consider what he's thinking of going to war to conquer the, the, the land of Syria. That's the discussion that is going to transpire here. Okay, pay attention. Now, read verse, jump up to verse 1 again. Read verse 1. First Kings chapter 22, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. Between Syria and Israel. So let me share my screen again so we can see where Syria is. Okay, that's Syria right there. So it's towards the east, okay, northeast of Samaria. Northeast of Samaria. That's where Syria is. Okay, verse one again. One more again. First Kings chapter 22, verse 1. Read. And they continue three years without war between Syria and Israel. Now we know what the subject, what where Syria is. You understand? So the discussion is about going to war, going to war with Syria. Because there was peace for three years. Now they want to go to war. Not the day by him. The king of Israel wants to go to war with the king of Judah. With the king of Judah against Syria. Okay? Jump down to verse, to verse 18. So we understand who is the king of the king of the king of Israel. Let's get the name of the king of Israel. Read that. Verse 18. Verse 18. Come on. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, mm -hmm. Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? He took about the prophet that would be consulted to be able to, to, to give the king the king counsel of what would happen if they go to war with Syria. Come down to verse 20. Verse 20. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab? Who shall what? Who shall persuade Ahab? So you really, you really need to think about it. This guy right here, the subject, the, now the Lord is talking to the councils in the heaven where the Most High God is. It says, who shall persuade Ahab? So Ahab was the king. You understand? Who Jehoshaphat came to visit. So Ahab is the one that wants to go to war with Syria to take their land. Okay? Go back to verse King 2 now. Verse 2. First Kings chapter 22, verse 2. Go ahead. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. Now we know who the king of Israel is. Ahab. Okay, come on. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth in Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria? So now he's telling you where Ramoth Gilead is. Ramoth in Gilead. He's, he's telling you the location where Ramoth in Gilead is. Read verse 3 again. 
First Kings chapter 22, verse 3. Go ahead. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye, know ye that Ramoth in Gilead is ours, mm -hmm. and we be still, Come on. and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. You see that thing? He says, what are we sitting here for? We, we need to go there and take the land. That's what he said. That's what Ahab is saying. He's telling, the, he's telling King Jehoshaphat. Watch this. So he's letting you know. He says, Ramoth in Gilead, out of the, out of the, the hand of the king of Syria. So he's letting you know where it, it lo is located. Okay, watch this. Um, when you look at the map, you see this is Syria, right? Syria, that means Ramoth Gilead. That is where Ramoth Gilead is. So watch this. Now, uh, can you, brothers and sisters, see this map that I'm showing now? Yes, sir. There's other maps. Yes, sir. Okay, all places. So now you see this is Syria here. Okay, Ramoth Gilead. You see where the, this is Ramoth Gilead. So Ramoth in Gilead is, was part of Syria. Okay, Ramoth in Gilead was part of Syria. Okay. This is where it is, Ramoth Gilead. Ramoth Gilead. Okay, you see, Aram, Syria. So this whole area here, it was regarded as what? Because the king of Syria, he owned this land. Let me put it that way. The king of Syria, he owned Ramoth, Ramoth in Gilead. But they call it Ramoth Gilead. Okay, he owned this land. And Ahab, he wanted to what? He wanted to go and conquer that land. So now he's talking to King Jehoshaphat that they must have a council together to go and wage war with the king of Syria to take Ramoth Gilead. Okay? Now, read that again. First Kings 22 verse 3. First Kings chapter 22 verse 3. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth in Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. Read. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. You see that thing? He said, listen, I'm going to go to war with you. That's what Jehoshaphat is saying. Jehoshaphat was a righteous king. So now, Ahab, he wants, wants Jehoshaphat to go to war with him. You understand? To conquer Ramoth Gilead. Read on. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Read that again, verse 5. First Kings chapter 22, verse 5. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, mm -hmm. Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. So now, Jehoshaphat was a righteous king because the first thing he's doing is that he must seek counsel. You understand? Seek counsel from the prophets so they'd be able to tell you if when you, when you go to, world, to, world, to wage war with the Syrians, if you are going to be successful or not. So he was a righteous king. Give me that in Sirach, okay? Give me the book of Ecclesiastes 32. Sirach 32, verse 18. Sirach 32, verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 32, verse 18. Come on. A man of counsel will be considerate. You see that thing? A man of counsel. Hold on. A man of counsel will be considered because they are going to war. So now Jehoshaphat is saying, listen, we need to seek counsel before we go to war. So that we can what? We can be able to, to see what the prophet is saying. If they have a word from the Lord, so we know whether this mission is going to, this campaign is going to be successful or not. Same thing today. You understand? It is a spiritual battle. So whatever the things that you are going through on a day to day, you don't see counsel, you are not a man of counsel. You see what I'm saying? The wisdom of the Lord is not with you. Read that again. Ecclesiastes 32 verse 18. Read. A man of counsel will be considerate. Read. But a strange and proud man is not daunted with fear. Uh -huh. The fear of the Lord. Even Read. when of himself he has done without counsel. So now it says, a man of body, but a strange and a proud man is not daunted with fear. Even when of himself he has done without counsel. Meaning what? He doesn't consider the counsel at all. He doesn't want to hear nothing. Because what? His mind is too precious. 
You see what I'm saying? So what we're reading here, Jehoshaphat was a man of counsel because he had to sit down to consider, okay, yes, we want to go to war, but we need to make sure that the most that God is with, is, will be with us. That's the mindset. Watch this. I'm going to give an example. Give me the book of First Samuel. Okay. Give me First Samuel. No, no, Second Samuel. I think that's right. Second Samuel chapter. Yeah, Second Samuel 2, verse 1. Let's read that. Now, this is King David. Okay. King David has been made king because remember, King David was waging wars, putting the nations in check, the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Edomites, the Moabites, the Ammonites. He was putting them in check. Now, watch this. First, second, second Samuel 2, verse 1. Read that. Second Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass after this that David inquired of the Lord, mm -hmm. saying, Shall I go up into any of, of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said unto him, Go up. And David said, Whither shall I go up? And he said, Unto Hebron. So now David inquired. David was a man of counsel. He asked the Lord, Should we go to war? You understand? Should I go up to the cities of Judah? Should I go up there? You see that thing? So David inquired at the, at the mouth of the Lord always. He was a man of counsel. He didn't just do things. You see that thing? Because a lot of you brothers, you don't, you just see, you know, we are going to Soweto. No, we are going to Midland and all of that. Well, this time, no, we will be in Zanjan. That's counsel from the Lord. Fasting has to happen. Prayer has to happen. Okay, we going, we're going over there now. Then we shut it down. Okay, read that again, verse 1. Second Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. Come on. And it came to pass after this that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said unto him, Go up. And David said, Whither shall I go up? Mm -hmm. And he said, Unto Hebron. You see that thing? It says, So now he's waiting from Council and says, And the Lord said unto him, Go up. And David said, Whether shall I go up? Okay, and he said, unto Hebron. Where must I go in the cities of Judah? Go to Hebron. Watch this. Now, let's look at the map again so you can see. Now, this what you are looking at here. You see this? This, this is Judah right here. Okay. This is Judah. Let me see. Okay, let me look at another map. I do have another map here. There we go. All praise to the most high. All praise. Now, let me share my screen once again. Okay, what you're looking at here, this is Judah. That's Hebron right there. Jerusalem. That's Northern Kingdom. Okay. Hebron. Read that again. Verse 1. Second Samuel 2 verse 1. Second Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. Right. And it came to pass after this that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto him, Go up. And David said, Whither shall I go up? And he said, Unto Hebron. So now what you're looking at here, this is Judah, right? Okay. But right here in Hebron, this is the city of Judah. This, this would be what this is. This is Jerusalem. This is Hebron. So David was here in Hebron and he was in Jerusalem as well. Because Jerusalem was the capital. Okay? So, but what I want to show you here is that David, he, he didn't do things. He, he, had to, he, he sought counsel. That's the point. King David sought counsel from the Most High. Just like who? Jehoshaphat did that. Jehoshaphat was a man of counsel. He inquired. Now, let's go back to 1 Kings. Go back to 1 Kings. No, no. Go back to Sarah 32. Sarah 32, verse 18 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 32, verse 18. Come on. A man of counsel will be considerate. Right. But a strange and proud man is not daunted with fear. Come on. Even when of himself he hath done not, he hath done without counsel. 
You see, King David was a man of counsel. He sought counsel. Jehoshaphat now is also doing the same thing. What is he doing? He's following after the footsteps of those that came before him, like King David. Okay, watch this. Go ahead. Next verse. Do nothing without advice. Mm -hmm. And when thou hast once done, repent not. You see what he's saying? So he says, do nothing without advice, meaning counsel. And when thou hast once done, repent not, meaning keep going for the counsel. When you start doing counsel, you see counsel, don't stop doing counsel. But I've seen a lot of you men, you don't seek counsel. You just make you just make decisions, you don't seek counsel. And I'd be picking up some behaviors when I, when we are at camp, I'll be picking stuff up because you don't seek counsel. Okay? But that's not how we do things in Islam. And I'm talking particularly to you men, because you are the you are the you you are these you are the brothers that the Lord is now going to groom. That's why you are being groomed now to become leaders. But what type of leader are you going to be going to come? That's not going to happen. Not going to trust you. Who's going to trust you with the nation of Israel? Get the hell out of here, man. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back to First Kings twenty-two, First Kings chapter twenty-two and verse. Read verse 5 again. 1 Kings 22 verse 1, verse 5. Come on. 1 Kings chapter 22 verse 5. Read. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. You see that thing? Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. So how did our forefathers inquire at the word of the Lord? The prophet. That's how they did. Watch this. Uh, keep going. Read verse 6. Verse 6. Then the, then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, uh -huh. and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. So now, I want you to see something. The king of Israel, we know who that is. We know is a simp called Ahab, right? Read verse 6 again. Because you might look at it and say, hmm, you know, Ahab, he, he, Ahab had some sense in his head. Now watch this. Read verse 6 again. Okay. First Kings chapter 22, verse 6. Come on. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men. How many men? About 400 men. About 400 men. So Ahab got 400 men, the prophets, to inquire at their mouth. Go ahead. About 400 men and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle? Uh -huh. Or shall I forbear? Read. And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the into the hand of the king. So now he's seeking counsel. They are telling him, This is 400 men. Now watch the next verse. Let's see what uh, King Jehoshaphat said. Read the next verse. Watch this. Verse 7. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides Stop right there. that we might... Hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. You see what Jehoshaphat is asking? Is there, is there not yet a prophet of the Lord besides? Now, when you go up, right? Read verse 6 again. I want to show you some. There's a difference here. Now, read verse 5 and 6. I'll show you something. Watch this. First Kings chapter 22, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. He says, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord. At the word of the Lord. Right? Go ahead. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, Stop right and there. said unto them, It says, The king is as the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men. Now, you notice here, he didn't say 400 men of the Lord. He didn't say of the Lord. He just said 400 men. Yes, they are prophets. 400 men. He says prophet, but he didn't say prophets of the Lord. No, no. He just said 400 men. Go ahead. About 400 men. And said unto them, Shall I go against remote Gilead to battle? Read. Or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up. For the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. Now watch the next part now. Listen to what Jehoshaphat said. Read on. Come on. And Jehoshaphat said, 
Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides? Stop right there. You see what he's asking? Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides? Meaning besides these 400 men, yes, they are prophets, but they are not the prophets of the Lord. That's what Jehoshaphat is saying. He's not coming out, or he's not, he's not coming out with it direct, but he's saying, is there not yet a prophet of the Lord beside these 400 men? Okay, go ahead. That we might inquire of him. So now what you notice here is Jehoshaphat does not consider those 400 men as the prophets of the Lord. Because Jehoshaphat was a what? Was a man of counsel. So the spirit of the Lord was upon him. Now watch this. Now who are these 400 men? Now let's go to 1st Kings, same, same book, 1st Kings chapter 18. I want to show you why Jehoshaphat responded the way that he did. Because I want to show you something about when things are happening in Israel, listen, people will know about it. Okay, watch this. First Kings chapter 18. Let's start at verse 17. First Kings chapter 18, verse 17. Go ahead. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? So now this is Elijah now. Elijah is a prophet of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord was upon Elijah. Now Ahab, the way he's dealing with Elijah, he doesn't consider Elijah, you understand, a prophet of the Lord because Elijah comes with truth. He doesn't sugarcoat it. He tells it the way that it is. So that's why he's asking him the question, are you the one that is troubling Israel? You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. And he answered, I have not troubled Israel. Uh -huh. But, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Baalim. There was, there was, there was followed Baalim. That's Baal. Okay, Nimrod. Read that again. First Kings chapter 18, verse 18. Uh -huh. And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. So now what commandments did Ahab pursue? Because Elijah is telling Ahab, listen, you've forsaken the commandments of the Lord. You're not keeping the commandments of the Lord no more. That's what he's telling him. Watch the next verse. Go ahead. Because the, guess what? The house of Ahab is following him, Balaam, the devil. Okay, come on. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel. And the prophets of Baal, 450. The prophets of Baal, 450, right? Go ahead. And the prophets of the groves, 400. Read. Really? Which eat at Jezebel's table. That is right there. That's why Jehoshaphat responded the way that he did. Because Jehoshaphat knew that Ahab, these 400 men, they are not the prophets of the Lord. They are the prophets of the grove. What is the grove? Because the grove is talking about the graven images. You know, that they were worshipping idols. The house of Ahab was a, was a house of idolatry. And guess what? Jehoshaphat knew about it. You think the whole Israel didn't know? Yes, they knew. All Israel knew. And everybody knew that Jezebel is the one that was running Ahab's house. So, now, let's get to the day day. Guess what? When you're... you're cause a lot of a lot of the brothers. <laughs> oh, let me calm down. Okay. Could you read that verse again? First Kings chapter 18, verse 19. Uh -huh. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel and to Mount Carmel. Go ahead. And the prophets of Baal, 450. Uh -huh. And the prophets of the groves, 400. Read. Which eat at Jezebel's table. So these 400 prophets of or the prophets of the groves. They ate at Jezebel's table. Not just them, but the 450. You understand? The prophets of Baal, 450. The prophets of the Grove, 400. 950 men, they ate at Jezebel's table. You see that thing? Not just 950, but 951, because Ahab is part of that list. You see that? Now, watch this. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because Jehoshaphat, because I know some of you forgot already. Go back to 1 Kings 22. We're going to go back to 1 Kings 18. I'm getting to the topic, but this is there. 1 Kings 22, 1 Kings 22 and verse 5 again. 1 Kings 22, verse 5. Wait. 
And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Uh -huh. Inquire at the word of the Lord. At the word of the Lord. Go ahead. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, so and said unto them. So the 400 men is the 400 men which were what? Which were the, these are the prophets of the grove. Those that are, those that are what? They worship idols. Idolatry. They are into idolatry. The main idol that they worship is Jezebel. You see that? So now the 400 that, 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 that Ahab brought, Jehoshaphat knew these are not the prophets of the Lord because they worship what? They worship Jezebel. They eat at Jezebel's table. So they are not the prophets of the Lord. Okay? Jump down to verse 7 now. Verse 7. Go ahead. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? That we may inquire of him. So now what I want to show you is that what I'm showing you here is what ha what's happening is in Israel, right? Like, let me just deal with this just for a second. If you brothers that are upcoming, that you are yet to get married, okay? Um, the sisters in the camp and all of that, and brothers that are proving and all that, guess what? We, I can tell if I can tell if you are a sinner. I can tell from a mile. I can see. I can see that if you are not married, you're gonna be running around your house. You're gonna be run around. You're gonna run around your your wife. Your wife will be running things. Okay, you're not gonna run your house. You you're gonna run around your house. Brothers that are proving, I can pick it up. If you are running around your wife, I can see it. Because guess what? The prophets are back. We can pick. You see, Jehoshaphat was able to pick up that brother right there. This one right, he's not running his house. So guess what? Even the prophets, they eat at Jezebel's table. So the most High God is not in that house. So when I tell you, brothers, brothers, get yourself together. Don't be a sin. Okay? Sisters, don't be a Jezebel. Guess what? Because if you don't want, if you don't stop that behavior, guess what's going to happen? This is going to happen what we're reading in 1 Kings 32. All Israel is going to know, and that's going to bring shame to your house. You see that? You brothers get that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sisters, do you understand that? Yes, sir. Hello? Because is there one sister in the house? And it's there. Sister, do you yes, get sir. that? Yes, sir. Oh, please. Yes, I hope you understand that. So you better make sure that your house, your Lord is setting your house in order. There must not be lift. None of that. You're supposed to help him to build. Because you don't want what we're reading here. So when Ahab, if you have, if you have an Ahab, and now we have to discuss matters of war, we have to now set up campaigns where we're going to go to war. Everybody's going to know, no, this brother ready, you cannot set him over a camp. Mm -mm. Jezebel is running him. So he's not going to be able to run the house, to rule the house of Israel. He's not going to be able to guide men. He's not equipped. You understand? Because his stone is in Jezebel's head. So guess what? Jehoshaphat knew that. Jehoshaphat knew that thing. Okay? Now let's go back to 1 Kings 22. 1 Kings 22, read verse 8 now. No, no, you know what? Now I want to deal with the prophets of the grove. Okay? Watch this. Give me that in Deuteronomy 7, verse 5. Let me touch on that. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 5. Go ahead. But thus shall you deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. So now that's how we dealt with the nations. Whenever we conquered, we were now we went out to conquer lands and all that. What we would do is we would burn their images and their groves and their altars. Why? To make sure that Israel, the wicked Negro, does not go in there and be picking up someone, some grove and say, I'm going to take this thing with me. I'm going to go and worship it because that's the mind of the Negro. So the Lord knew, listen, when you go and conquer, burn everything down. Okay? Watch this. Give me Exodus 34, verse 12. Okay? Exodus, chapter 34, verse 12. Let's start this. 
Exodus chapter 4, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitant of the land whither thou goest. Wait. Lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. Come on. But ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. And cut down their groves, because those groves were made out of wood. They, were, they would cut a wooden, a wooden image, a graven image, out of wood, and they would be worshipping them. So they had 400, there's 400 prophets, quote unquote, they are the ones that, that, that Ahab brought. So who brought those prophets, really? Was it Ahab? No, it was Jezebel. Because they all ate at Jezebel's table. Jehoshaphat knew that. So if Jehoshaphat knew that, all Israel knew that. You understand? Okay, go ahead. For thou shalt, for thou shalt worship no other God. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. That's it right there. Let's learn now. Let's go back. Let's go back to uh, 15, 22. 15, 22. Read verse 7 again. First Kings chapter 22, verse 7. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? Well, that we might inquire of them because Jehoshaphat was a man of counsel. That's why he said what he said. Go ahead. Verse 8. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is, not, there is yet one man, Micaiah, Micaiah, mm -hmm. Micaiah the son of Imlah, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. Come on. But I hate him. Stop right there. What did you say? He. But I hate him. But I hate him. You see what you, you, you listen to what Ahab is saying. He said, yeah, there is one man. Because this whole time, he knew that there was one brother that you can go and seek counsel. He was a prophet. He was a prophet of the Lord. But he said, no, no, no. I don't want that brother. I want that 400 men, those simps that are eating at Jezebel's table, the ones that are going to be able to what? To give counsel. So what type of counsel do you think they're going to give? They're going to tell you what you want to hear. Okay? And we're going to read about that as we read down. But what I want to show you is that the reason why he did not consult Micaiah because he knew that Micaiah was not double-minded. Micaiah was about the law of the God. Micaiah, he was a faithful brother. Okay? That means, that means, go back to 1 Kings chapter 18. Okay, 1 Kings 18 verse 17 again. 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 17. And he answered, verse 17, And it came to pass, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? That means Ahab, the way he looked at Elijah, he looked at Elijah with hatred. He didn't like Elijah. He hated Elijah. Because that's the same thing here. He hates Micaiah. Because he was, that was a prophet of the Lord. You see that? Watch this. Give me the book of Galatians 4.16. Galatians. Because remember what Ahab said. He says, but I hate him. Galatians 4.16. Let's see why he hated this brother. Galatians chapter 4 verse 16. Read. Am I therefore become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. You see that thing? So because a lot of you, especially you simps and the sisters, you the class goes up, brothers and sisters get correction, they get they get correction in 85 and all that. A lot of you you don't apply the council. You know why? Because when the council goes up, now I have become your enemy now because you are you are because of what? I can't tell you based on what is written. I don't tell you what I think. I can't tell you based on what is written. A lot of you don't like that. Now I have become your enemy now. Give me that in Micah. Yes, sir. Okay, Micah 2 verse 8. Micah chapter 2 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Even of late, my people is risen up as an enemy. You see that? My people is risen up as an enemy. Why? Because the truth goes out. The prophets come, the true prophets of the Lord, they use the Bible to set things in order. Those that hate correction, they're not going to like that. You're going to look at the prophets as your enemy. When we are your brothers, we love you. We are your fathers. We want what's best for you. Okay? But Ahab, the way he looked at the prophets, he looked at the prophets with hatred. Why? Because the prophet's job is to what? To bring out the scriptures as it is written so things can be set in order. Give me that in 1 Corinthians. Okay, chapter 4. 
1 Corinthians 4 verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1. Read. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ Read. and stewards of the mysteries of God. So now the Apostle Paul he says, this is how I want, I want you to look at us. He says, let a man so account of us. Look at us like this. As of the ministers of Christ. We are the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. What is a steward? Let's get the definition of the word steward. And stewards of the mysteries of God. Watch this. Oh, yes. That's the one right there. What's exactly really the one? I, I, that, this one can do. Okay. Um, yeah, read this. Read this definition. The definition of steward. Um, read that highlighted definition. Come on. The definition of steward. Noun. A person whose responsibility is to take care of something. A person whose responsibility is to take care of something. An overseer. An overseer. Okay, watch this. Read, um, read this one. Read the highlighted one. Come on. An officer of the royal household, especially an administrator of crown estates. Okay, an officer of the royal household. The royal household is the nation of the 12 tribes of Israel. We are a royal house, okay? So a steward is a what? A steward is a leader, okay? Is an overseer, you understand? A prophet, that's an overseer, a steward, okay? Read that again, First Corinthians 4, verse 1 again. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Did a man so account of us as of the ministry ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. And stewards of the mysteries of God. And stewards and stewards of the mysteries of God. Meaning what? We are all stewards in here. Okay, we are all stewards. Next verse. Watch this. Verse 2. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. He says it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. You see that? So Ahab, the spirit of Ahab does not like faithful men. The spirit of Ahab likes those brothers that will be able to just be yes men. I don't want a yes man around me. Mm -mm. Don't be a sin. You must be a man of cancer. You must be in the fit. Okay? You must be a man of you must be a man of cancer, meaning what? You must be able to understand when decisions are made, you must understand, okay, it is biblical. Because I can see it is written. Okay, that's why I want you brothers to study. I want you brothers to study because you are being groomed to become leaders. You are being groomed to become judges in Israel. It's not a small matter. It's nothing to be taken lightly. Okay, it's a heavy, heavy responsibility because you are going to be responsible for the nation of Israel. You understand? We outnumber the sand of the sea. So you can't take it lightly. Okay, that's why it says a prophet must be found faithful. Whatever the scripture says, you're going to do it. Watch this. Let's go back. Okay. First Kings. First Kings chapter 22, verse 8 again. First Kings chapter 22, verse 8. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imlah, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. Mm. But I hate him. But I hate him. Go ahead. For he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. So now, according, hold on. According to Ahab, according to Ahab, when 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 Micaiah, because remember, when he says inquire the mouth of the Lord, he inquired the mouth of the prophet, the seer. So now, whenever Micaiah would give counsel, Ahab didn't like that because he didn't favor him. So the way he looked at it, it was evil. So it is today. Some of you, that's how you look at you look at cancer. When cancer goes out, you look at it as an evil thing. That's the spirit of Ahab. That's the spirit of Jezebel. Okay, go ahead. And Jehoshaphat said, "Let not the king say so." Meaning what? Don't 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 speak like that. Why are you saying like that? For? Why? Because they knew Israel knew that the house of Ahab 
Listen, the house of Ahab is out of order. Jezebel is running the show. So now the Lord put the spirit upon our forefather, King Jehoshaphat, to get Micaiah because Micaiah will be able to prophesy the, 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 the right thing. Now watch this. We're going to jump down. Um, no, keep reading. Read verse 9. Actually, I guess I could read verse 9. Read verse 9. Verse 9. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten hither, Micaiah, the son of Imlah. He says, call Micaiah here. Call him here. Now jump down to verse 13. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah speak unto him, saying, Now, let's Behold just, now. So remember, verse, verse 9 is telling you, um, an officer was commanded to go and call Micaiah to come and what? Prophesy, right? Now read verse 18. Listen to what the messenger tells Micaiah. Come on. Verse 13. And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah speak unto him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophets declare, declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. You see what the messenger is telling him? He said, listen, everybody told the king, the king, everybody told the king to go to war with Syria. He's going to be successful. He's going to be prosperous. So he's telling Micaiah, listen, don't be speaking anything different. You see what he's doing? Give me that in Exodus 23. Watch this. Exodus 23 and verse 2. So he wants Micaiah to break this law right here. Exodus 23 verse 2. Exodus 23 verse 2. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. You see that? You see what he's saying? So now it says, don't follow a multitude to do evil. So the messenger is telling Micaiah to follow the multitude. The 400 prophets of the groves that ate the Jezebel's table to do what? He's, for, he's commanding him to what? To say the same things that they said. You understand? To rest. He says, don't rest judgment now. Okay? That's what he's telling you. Now let's go back. First Kings 22, verse 13 again. First Kings chapter 22, verse 13. And the messenger that was gone to, to call Micaiah, the son, speak unto him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. You see that part right there? When it says with one mouth, meaning everybody said the same thing. You understand? But it was not a good, it wasn't good counsel. It was poor counsel. That's why Jehoshaphat had to intervene at the command of the Lord. Read. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like a word of one of them and speak, which is good. Now listen to what Micaiah says now. Go ahead. First book of Kings, chapter 22, verse 14. And Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. You see what he's saying? Now Micaiah is responding, says, listen, as the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, what the Lord tells me to say, I'm going to speak what the Lord says I'm going to speak. But watch the next verse. Go ahead. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? Uh -huh. And he answered him, Go and prosper. You see what he's doing? He's doing it out of fear. He's afraid. So now he's afraid to what? He's afraid to speak the truth. You see that thing? Go ahead. For the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. Now he's telling him what he wants to do. He's battering him up. But he knows or that's not really what the Lord is saying. Okay, go ahead. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord. So now the reason why you see, the king doesn't believe it because he has never gone to Micaiah to seek counsel and Micaiah told him what he wanted to hear. Now he's like, what the hell? Because you never give me good counsel. So what's going on today? So Ahab was able to pick up something is up here. Okay, at least he, he had that sense. Okay, but watch this. That is why Micaiah did what he did. Watch this. Give me that in first answer. Okay, first Ezra chapter four. 
Yes, that's what it is. Um, yeah, so uh, first Ezra chapter four and the start of verse one. Start of verse two. First, first Ezra four verse two. First book of Ezra chapter four verse two. Uh -huh. Oh, ye men, do not men excel in strength that bear rule over sea and land and all things in them? So now he's talking about the, the, the strength of the king, the power and might that the king has. Go ahead. But yet the king is more mighty, uh -huh. for he is lord of all these things and has dominion over them. And whatsoever he commandeth them, they do. You see what he's saying? That's why Micaiah, when, Micaiah, when, when the messenger told Micaiah, listen, you better speak good concerning this message. Don't be telling the truth here. Just lie. That's what he really was saying. So Micaiah got scared. So now, because why did he get scared? Because of what we're reading here. Because the king has power. Read that again, verse 3. But yet the king is more mighty, for he is lord of all these things and has dominion over them. Read. And whatsoever he commanded them, they do. Read. If he bid them make war the one against the other, they do it. If he send them out against the enemies, they go and break down mountains, walls, and towers. Meaning they conquer and subdue nations at the command of the king. If they go and make war, they do it. But watch the next verse. Go ahead. They slay and are slain. You see that thing? They and slay, they slay, and are slain. So at the command of who? At the command of the king. If the king said, go and kill that brother, king, that they do it. Because of why? Because of the power that the king has. Read. And transgress not the king's commandment. If they get the victory, they bring all to the king, as well the spoil as all things else. You see that thing? So now whatever the king says they must do, they do it. If the king commands them, go and kill. If the, the commandment was that the king commanded Micaiah to be killed, Guess what was what, what was going to happen to Micaiah? Micaiah was going to be put to death. You see that thing because of what we're reading here. Go ahead. Likewise, for those that are no soldiers and have not to do with wars, but use husbandry, when they have reaped again that which they had sown, they bring it to the king and compel one another to pay tribute unto the king. We see, we see what he's saying. So now he's taking a step further. Says, those that are not part of the, those are not, those that are not men of war, those are not but mighty valiant men. He says, if if you're not part of that, you're just normal people, husbandry, you know, they are farmers and all that, they deal with agriculture. He says they live, but they still have to what they still have to pay, go to the king and pay tribute to the king because of the power that the Lord has put upon the king. Go ahead, next verse. Watch this. And and yet he is but one man. Uh -huh. If he command to kill, they kill. Read. If he command to spare, they spare. You see that thing? If he says kill, they're going to kill Makai. Go ahead. Verse 8. If he command to smite, they smite. Uh -huh. If he command to make desolate, they make desolate. If he command to build, they build. You see that thing? So here, where the Lord is, is, is teaching us the power that the king has. So that's what I'm trying to show you here. Why Micaiah called it? Because he understood the power that is bestowed upon the king. Because he was the king of Israel. He was the king of Northern Kingdom. Yes, he was a wicked king, but he was still a king. Okay, now let's go back. Let's go back to First Kings. Okay, where was we at? First, First Kings 22, 16. Okay, read verse 15 again. First Kings chapter 22, verse 15. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. That's why he said what he said, because of what we just read in first Ezra. Go ahead. And the king said unto him, how many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? Because guess what? He knew... That Micaiah, when he's doing the council, guess what? He brings it. He does, he's not afraid of the face of men. Why? Because he understands. But now Ahab is like, wait a minute. This doesn't make sense. And all the times that I've come to you, you've never told me anything that was favorable to me. So that means something's wrong. That's what he said right there. 
Watch this. Um, this and this spirit that Micaiah has, we must inherit that spirit. Even that in Deuteronomy chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 17. He shall not respect persons in judgment, uh -huh. but he shall hear the small as well as the great. He shall not be afraid of the face of men, for the judgment is God's. For the what? For the judgment is God's. For the judgment is God's. Read that again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 17. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is God's. Read. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me and I will hear it. That's what Moses told Israel. You understand? So likewise, Micaiah, but Micaiah is going to get his mind right. Okay, let's go back. First Kings 22, read verse 17 now. Now he's going to tell the truth and listen to what he says. Because those 400 men, those were not the prophets of the law. Okay. And watch this. Give me that the description of the rack. I think it's rack 19. Mm. Let me look at it. It's not part of my notes. So just, yeah, it's rack 16. Could you give me that it's rack 16 verse 1? I just want to touch on uh, the 400 prophets of the groves. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 16, verse 1. Desire not a multitude of unprofitable children. Go ahead. Neither delight in ungodly sons. Read it again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 16, verse 1. Desire not a multitude of unprofitable children. Neither delight in ungodly sons. That's the commandment right there. He says, don't desire a multitude of unprofitable children. So those 400 prophets of the groves, those were unprofitable children. You understand? They were ungodly sons. Because Jezebel was their God. Read on. Sarah 16 verse 2 now. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 16 verse 2. Though they multiply, we choice not in them, except the Lord, except the fear of the Lord be with them. You see that thing? It says, though they multiply, well, they become many. He says, don't rejoice in them. Don't take pleasure in them. You understand? Except the fear of the Lord be with them. The only time you can take pleasure in them is if the fear of the Lord is upon them. Meaning they are keeping God's commandments. That's what he's saying right there. Now, let's go back. Let's go back to 1 Kings 22, verse 17 now. Watch this. 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 17. Uh -huh. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. You see what he's saying? So now he's giving him the right counsel now from the most high. He says, he saw Israel scattered as a, as a what? Scattered upon the hills as a sheep that have not, not a shepherd. Meaning what? You're going to go to war, you're not going to be successful. Meaning what? You are going to what? You are going to get the beat down. That's what he's telling him. That you're not going to win. You're going to be scattered. They're going to smite the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. That's something else now. Go ahead. Verse 18. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? You see what he's saying? He said, didn't I tell you? This guy is always prophesying evil. He never tells me things that I want to hear. That's really what he's saying. And guess what? That's the that that's Christianity in a nutshell, right there. Okay, go ahead. Verse 19. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. So now he's telling him, Listen, listen, you're not gonna be successful. And he's, he's now he's gonna even go into the details of how he's not going to be successful. But Ahab is not going to still hear that. Okay, you can read the whole history on your own. But read verse 19 again. First Kings chapter 22, verse 19. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. So now Micaiah is saying, Listen, 
Hear the word of the Lord now. I'm telling you now. He says, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on the right hand and on the left. He's saying, he's seeing the most high God. He's seeing us, the host of heaven on his left and on his right. Now let's deal with the host first before we deal with the Lord sitting on his throne. Okay. Give me that in Psalms 148. Let's start at verse 1. Psalms 148 verse 1. Psalms chapter 148, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. You see what he's saying? He says, praise the Lord from the heavens. Okay, praise him in the heights. Because that's where he's at. Go ahead. Praise ye him, all, the, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. You see that thing? So the angels is the host. So the host we read in First Kings, go back to First Kings now. Now we understand what is the host. Okay, First Kings 22, verse 19 again. First Kings chapter 22, verse 19. Come on. And he said, hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. So the host of heaven that was standing on the right hand of the Lord and on the left, he's talking about the angels. The angels, there's angels on the right and there's angels on the left. Okay, watch this. Give me Psalm 78, verse 49. Psalm 78, verse 49. Psalm 78, verse 49. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. You see that thing? So wrath, trouble, indignation. Guess what? It's because of the evil angels that sit on the left hand of the Most High God. So on, in the heavens where the Lord is, you've got good angels on the right, you've got evil angels on the left. Okay? Read that again, verse 49. Psalm chapter 78, verse 49. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, Read. wrath and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. By sending evil angels among them. These evil angels, they are on the left hand of the Most High God. You understand? Watch this. Now, give me the book of Psalms. Mm, let me see before I go to the book of Psalms. Give me, yeah, give me Psalms 137. Psalms 137. Psalms 137 and verse, start at verse 4. You know, start at verse 5. Psalms 137 verse 5. Psalms chapter 137 verse 5. Mm -hmm. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. You saw now he's saying, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem. So in order for you, for you, when you forget, where does it take place? In your mind. In your mind, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. Because with your hand, what do you do? Watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Deuteronomy. Is that Deuteronomy that I want? Hmm. Yeah, I believe that's what I want. I think I want Deuteronomy 6. Yeah, I want Deuteronomy 6. Give me Deuteronomy 6. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse. Yeah, verse 8. That's the one. Um, yeah, read verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. You see what it's saying? Read that again, verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 8. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. So now it says, these laws, the laws of God, they shall be what? It says, you shall bind them on thy hand. You understand? It says, they shall be as what? They shall be for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. What is between your eyes? Your mind. Okay? That's why it says, I shall forget thee, O Jerusalem. Let my right hand forget her coming. Because with your hand, what do you do? You apply. You see that thing? With your hand, you apply the laws of God. So when it says, 
frontiers between your eyes because what's in your mind is going to be the laws of God and you're going to do what's in your mind because God's laws is what's in your mind. That's what this is going into. So go back to Psalms 137. Psalms 137 and verse 5 again. Psalms chapter 137, verse 5. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. Let my, it says, if I forget thee, because there's supposed to be what as front as between your eyes. You understand? It's supposed to be in your mind. It says, let my right hand forget her cunning. So on the right hand is what? Is the good judgment. On the left hand, that's why you've got evil angels to do what? To execute the wrath of the Lord upon those wicked Negroes that don't want to apply what is written. So what I'm what I'm what I'm showing you, brothers and sisters, is on the left hand you've got evil angels, on the right hand you've got good angels. So what I want to show you in the right hand is the is the good judgment, mercy. You understand? Good judgment. Watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Hebrews, chapter one. Hebrews one verse three. Let me touch on this. Hebrews 1 verse 3. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Mm -hmm. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Let's talk about Christ. And upholding all Ray. things by the... Let's talk about Christ. Okay, there's a delay. And upholding all things... Wait. And upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. You see what? He does talk about Christ here. He sat on the right hand of the majesty on high. The right hand of the majesty on high. So on the right hand, that's where you got what? Good judgment. The right judgment. Good judgment. Good angels on the right. Evil angels on the left. That's what Micaiah is telling you. Ahab. Regarding them him wanting to go to war with the king of Syria. So he's telling him, listen, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne on his left. There was a host on his left and in his right there was a host, the angels. So now I'm showing you on the right hand is the good angels, on the left is the evil angels. Okay? Watch this. Now Psalms 103 verse 20. Psalms 103 verse 20. The, the host that is sitting on the throne of the Lord around the throne, guess what? They do exactly as they are told. They don't go outside of the those that command them. Okay, Psalms 103, verse 20. Psalms chapter 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening, hearkening unto the voice of his word. So now the angels, they follow the command. The most High tells them, listen, I want you to do X, Y, and Z. They're going to gladly do it. They're not going to go outside of that command. If it's the evil angel to, God, to bring forth judgment, guess what? He's going to do it. There's no if or maybe or but about it. It's going to go down. Why? At the command of the Lord. All right. So read that again, verse 20. Psalms chapter 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. So now let's go back to 1 Kings now, 22. 1 Kings 22, verse 19 again. 1 Kings 22, verse 19. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. So now we know on the right hand is good angels, on the left hand is evil angels. And each of which they perform exactly as they are commanded. They don't go to the left or to the right of the command that is coming from the most high. Okay, read the verse again now. I want to deal with the throne now. First Kings chapter 22 verse 19. And he said, hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne Stop right and there. all the host of heaven. He says, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. That's what we're going to deal with, okay? He saw the Lord sitting on his throne. Watch this. Give me the book. 
Give me the book of Ecclesiastes. Okay, give me Sarah chapter 1, verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 8. He says, He saw the Lord sitting on his throne. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 8. There is one wise and greatly to be feared, the Lord sitting upon his throne. Read that again, verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 8. There is one wise and greatly to be feared, the Lord sitting upon his throne. So the Lord sits on his throne. He is wise and must be great, must greatly to be feared. The Lord sitting upon his throne. Give me wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 4. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 and verse 4. I'm building up, so I'm just getting a lot of, um, I'm getting precepts, I'm getting more precepts for you. Okay? So just write these precepts down. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 4. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 4. Give me wisdom that sitteth by thy, by thy throne. And reject me not from among thy children. He says, Give me wisdom that sits by thy throne, by thy throne. Because the Lord sits on his throne. He's the king. He is the king of the most high like God. Okay, watch this. Come down to verse 10 now. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter, chapter 9, verse 10. Oh, send her out of thy holy heavens and from the throne of thy glory, that being present, she may labor with me that I may know what is pleasing unto thee. So now he's saying, send her, the hair is wisdom. He says, send her out of thy holy heaven and from the throne of thy glory. Okay, talk about wisdom. But here we know the Lord is sitting on, the Lord sits on his throne. Now we're going to find out where the throne is, where the throne of the most high God is. Because this is the question that I see all the time. The brothers and sisters be coming to camp, where is the Lord? He sits on his throne. Where is that throne? We're going to deal with that. Give me Psalm 45 and 6. Psalm 45 and 6. And you brothers, you must take notes. Because when that question comes, you now know how to answer it. Psalm 45, verse 6. Psalm chapter 45, verse 6. Go ahead. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Mm -hmm. The scepter of thy kingdom is as a right scepter. Read that again. Psalm chapter 45, verse 6. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. So he says, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Where do we always read this? In the book of Hebrews. Give me that in Hebrews 1 and 8. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8. A scepter is a staff that is used by kings. Okay? A scepter is a staff. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8. Let's start at verse 7. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 7. Go ahead. And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits, mm -hmm. and his ministers a flame of fire. His angels spirits. Those are the spirits that we read in 1 Kings 22 verse 19. Go ahead. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. You see that thing? And that's where that's what we're waiting on. The kingdom that will be established upon this earth. A theocracy. Okay, read that again. Verse 8. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Mm -hmm. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Now watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes now. Ecclesiastes 5 and 2. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 2. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven. He's where? For God is in heaven. For God is in heaven. The most high God is in heaven, sitting on his throne. The most high God is in heaven, sitting upon his throne. Go ahead. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore, 
Let thy words be few. God is in heaven and we are upon the earth. Let my our words must be few. We must what? Filter our, our speech based on what is written. Okay? God is in heaven sitting upon his throne. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 66 verse 1. Isaiah 66 and verse 1. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 1. Read. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne. Stop right there. The what? And the, the heaven is my throne. Hold this. Go back to Ecclesiastes now. 5 and 2 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 2. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Come on. For God is in heaven. God is where? For God is in heaven. The most that God is in heaven. Come on. And thou upon earth. Uh -huh. Therefore let thy words be few. For God is in heaven. For God is in heaven. For God is in heaven. Now go back to Isaiah 66 verse 1. For God is in heaven. Okay. Read that. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 1. Come on. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne. The heaven is my throne. So when it says God is in heaven, the heaven, that's where his throne is. That's where his throne is at. In heaven. That's where the Lord is. In heaven, sitting upon his throne. That's where it says the heaven is my throne. Go ahead. The heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? So watch this. Give me the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 48. Acts, chapter 7, verse 48. Acts 7, 48. Acts, chapter 7, verse 48. Come on. How be it, the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. As saith the prophet. Who is the prophet? Isaiah, go ahead. Watch this. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. Mm -hmm. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? So now he says, Heaven is my throne, and the earth, and earth is my footstool. Heaven is my throne. You understand? So when they say where the where is the Lord is in heaven, which is where which, which is where his throne is at. Now watch this. Give me first kings now. Because it says, heaven is my throne. Okay? Heaven is my throne. First Kings chapter 8, verse 27. First Kings chapter 8, verse 27. First Kings chapter 8, verse 27. Mm -hmm. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have built it. Read that again, verse 27. First Kings chapter 8, verse 27. Mm -hmm. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have built it. So now remember it says the heaven is his throne. Now King, King Solomon is going to explain. He's explaining certain things to us. He's saying, behold, the heaven and the heaven of heaven cannot contain thee. Now that's some heavy stuff right there. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heaven cannot contain the most high. Remember, he says, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. So heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain. He coming back here. Give me Deuteronomy 10 verse 14. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 14. Because the question is, where is the most high God? He's in heaven. Where his throne is at. You understand? But he's saying, now King Solomon is taking it a step further and says, the heaven and the heaven of heaven. So now that's heaven. The heaven and the heaven of heaven. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 14. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 14. Read. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God. The earth also, with all that therein is. Read that again, verse 14. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 14. Behold, the heaven 
and heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God. The, the earth also, with all that therein is. So he says, behold, that Moses is also he's telling us again, Moses is saying, behold, the heaven and the heaven of heaven is the Lord's thy God. So the heaven of heavens be the Lord. The heaven of heavens is the Lord. Read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 14. Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God. Uh -huh. The earth also with all that therein is. Watch this. Give me Sarah 16 verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 16 verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 16, verse 18. Behold, the heaven Hold on. and heaven of... You know what? Start of, start of 17. Something I want out of the 17. Read the 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 16, verse 17. Say not thou, I will hide myself from the Lord. Shall any remember me from above? From where? From above. From above. Shall any remember me from above, above? Go ahead. Shall any remember me from above? I shall not be remembered among so many people. For what is my soul among such an infinite number of creatures? An infinite number of creations. Read on. For what is my soul among such an infinite number of creations? No, no, creatures. Creatures means creation. Go ahead. Verse 18, behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens and the heaven of heavens, the deep and the earth and all that therein is shall be moved when he shall visit. That's some heavy stuff right there. When the Lord returns, is as heavy, the heaven and the heaven of heaven, the deep, that's deep space and the earth, he says they are going to be moved. Hmm. That's why Habakkuk said, I want to be dead on that day. I understand what he's saying. He's, I want to be dead on that day. Okay. Read that again. Verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 16 verse 18. Mm -hmm. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens, the deep and the earth, and all that therein is shall be moved when he shall visit. When the Lord, when the Lord returns, he says everything is going to be moved. But what I want to show you here is, he says, heaven is my throne. Go back to Isaiah. Isaiah 66 verse 1 again. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Mm -hmm. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? So now, when he says heaven is my throne, is not talking about the sky that we see. It's not talking about deep space. It's talking about the heaven of heaven. Heaven of heaven, plural. The heaven of heaven. Okay? Give me that in John chapter 14. I just want to touch on something. I'll massage this topic. I'm just going to check it. John 14 verse 1. Watch this. John chapter 14 verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. Now this is Christ speaking. He says, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in the Lord. Believe also in me. Because who sent Christ? The most High God. Go ahead. In my Father's house are many mansions. They are what? In my Father's house are many mansions. In my Father's house are many, many, many mansions. Mansions. Mention. Go ahead. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. So now what we're reading here, Christ is giving us a heavy stuff right He says, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Now, go back to it, Sirach chapter 16, verse 18 now. Ecclesiastes chapter 16, verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 16, verse 18. Behold, the heaven and heaven and the heaven of heavens, the deep and the earth, and all that therein is shall be moved when he shall visit. Read that again, verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 16, verse 18. Come on. Behold, 
the heaven and the heaven of heavens. Stop right there. He says, behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens. The heavens, the plural, is what? Is the many mansions. Right now, we're just dealing with our with the, just our galaxy. Okay? There's multiple galaxies, multiple universes. They exist in the Bible. Christ just gave us a clue here. That's why it says heaven of heavens. Now, we're going to deal with the heaven of heavens, where the Lord is. Okay? Because that's where the most High God is. The heaven of heavens. Meaning the heaven of all the heavens, the main one where the most high God is thrown is. Okay, watch this. Give me, give me the book. Give me the book of Second Corinthians. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse what? No, no, you know what? Hmm. Let's deal, let's deal with the heavens, not the heaven of heaven. I'll finish with the heaven of heaven. Let's deal with the heaven. Give me the book of Genesis chapter 7, verse 23. Genesis 7, 23, read that. Like I said, I'm Genesis. not gonna go, I'm not gonna go too deep on this, but I just want you brothers to understand when this question comes up, when you answer it, don't be going to the heavens of heavens and all that. Just keep it simple, but you understand what's going on. So that if somebody now tries to be slick, that's when you pull on the you pull out the missile. You understand? Read that. Genesis 7, 23. Genesis chapter 7, verse 23. Read. And every living substance was destroyed, which it was upon the face of the ground. Uh -huh. Both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of heaven. And the what? And the fowl, and the fowl of the heaven. And the fowl of the heaven. The fowl. What is the fowl? The bird. The bird. And the fowl of the heaven. Read that part again. Genesis chapter 7 verse 23 mm -hmm. and every living substance was destroyed which was upon the face of the ground both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven mm -hmm. go ahead and they and they were destroyed from the earth and Noah only remained alive and they that were with him in the ark so now what you are seeing is the fowl of the heaven the fowl is talking about the bird, the bird in the sky. The sky that we see, you see the sky that sees where the birds fly, that is heaven. That is the, it's called the first heaven, okay? That's why it says heaven of heaven, plural. The first heaven, the sky where the birds fly, that is called the first heaven, okay? Give me Genesis chapter 1, verse 20. Read that. Genesis chapter 1, verse 20. Read. And God said, let, uh, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life mm -hmm. and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. That's our sky, okay? That's where the bear, where the best fly is called heaven. That is the first heaven, okay? Watch this. Give me Genesis chapter 8, verse 2 now. Genesis 8, verse 2. Genesis chapter 8, verse 2. Mm -hmm. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped. And the what? And the windows of heaven were stopped. The windows of heaven were stopped. Go ahead. And the rain from heaven was restrained. And the rain, the rain from heaven was restrained. Because rain comes from where? The cloud. Okay, watch this. Which Give me that in Psalms. I believe it's in Psalms 147. Give me that in Psalms. Let me look at it. Mm, just popped into my head. Not part of my notes. Ah, let's see. Yes, give me Psalms. Give me Psalms 147 and verse, verse 8. Psalms 147, verse 8. Psalms 147, verse 8. Read. Who, cover, who covereth the heaven with clouds. He does what? Covereth the heaven with clouds. He covereth the heaven, the heaven with clouds, the heaven with clouds. So we see the clouds are it's called heaven. Go ahead. Who prepareth rain for the earth? Uh -huh. Who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains? So that the rain comes from the clouds, which is where in heaven. So that's the first heaven. Now go back to where we were at. Genesis chapter eight, verse two. 
Genesis chapter 8, verse 2. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped. Mm -hmm. And the rain from, from heaven was restrained. You see that thing? So where the, where the you see where the birds fly and all that? Okay, where the birds fly. It's because the eagles, like they go all the way high. So where the birds fly okay. and all that, the, the clouds and all that's called heaven. That is the first heaven. All right. Watch this. Give me Genesis 7, verse 11. Genesis chapter 7, verse 11. Come on. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, in the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. And the windows of heaven was opened. The windows of heaven was opened. Go ahead. And the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. You see that thing? So where rain comes from, which is from the clouds, is called heaven. That is the first heaven. Okay? Because it says heaven of heaven. Watch this. Now, give me the book of Genesis chapter 1. Give me Genesis chapter 1 and verse 6. This is now the second day. Okay, watch this. Go ahead. Genesis chapter 1 verse 6. And God said, let, the, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. So now these waters is making reference to what? Remember, we went over this class. We, we did Genesis chapter 1 breakdown. So if you don't remember, just go over your notes. So read that again, verse 6. Genesis chapter 1, verse 6. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. So the waters is talking about what? Was it actual literal water and all that? No, it was in terms of what? Elements. The periodic table of elements, yes. Hydrogen plus two oxygen molecules, they form H2O, which is water. But it was in a form of what? Element. So the Lord was separating what? The waters from above the firmament and the waters that was going to be below the firmament. Next verse. Go ahead. Verse 7. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. So now the most high God is dividing these waters now. Okay. The waters that will be above the firmament and the ones that will be below the firmament. Read on. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. He says God called the firmament heaven. Now we're going into what? Now goes into the ozone layer. Okay. Because outside of the ozone layer is called deep space. Inside the ozone layer, that's our sky now. The clouds and all of that. That's the first heaven. Above the firmament, uh, outside of the firmament, that is that is what that is called space. Okay, read that again. Verse 8. Genesis chapter 1, verse 8. Read. And God called the firmament heaven. Mm -hmm. And the evening and the morning were the second day. So now this firmament is called heaven. Watch this. Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So now this is the fourth day of creation. He says, Let there be light in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night. Okay, so now he's creating, he's going to create two great lights. You understand? They're in the firmament of heaven. Now we're no longer, this is not the first heaven anymore. This is now the second heaven. He's going to tell you what those great, those lights are. Next verse. Go ahead. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. Read. And God made two great lights. Mm -hmm. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So now on the fourth day, the greater light to rule the day is what? The sun. The lesser light to rule the night is the what? The moon. He made the stars also. Where are they at? They are in space, in deep space. 
Okay, go back to Sirat chapter 16, verse 18. Because I know some of you forgot already. Psalm 16, verse 18. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 16, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens, the deep the and the earth, and, and all that and the earth. No, the deep, the deep. Read that part again. Ecclesiastes chapter eight, 16, verse 18. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens, the deep, the deep, the deep, and the deep. So the deep is deep space. That's the second heaven. You understand? That's where the sun, moon, and stars are. That's not the first, that's not the first heaven where the birds fly, where the clouds are, where rain descends from. No. The space now where the sun, moon, and stars are. That is called deep space. That is the second heaven. Okay? So now, give me second Ezra chapter 6, verse 45. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 45. If you want deeper understanding, I'll 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 send the the, the I'll send the, the audio file to so the journal will put it on SoundCloud of Genesis chapter one breakdown. Read that second Ezra six verse forty five. Second Ezra chapter six verse forty five. Read. Upon the fourth day, thou commandest that the sun should shine. Upon the what day? And the moon gave give her light. Upon the fourth day. Uh -huh. Thou, thou commandest that the sun should shine. And the moon give her light. And the stars should be in order. So now, on the fourth day, now remember what we just read in Genesis 1, verse 14 to verse 16. Okay, to verse 18. So now it says, upon the fourth day, thou commandest that the sun should shine. Where's the sun? It's not in the first heaven. It's in the second heaven. Okay. And that the moon give her light. These are the two, these are the two lights now. The greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night, which is what? The moon. And the moon gave her light. And the stars should be in order. So that's the second heaven. Okay. Now go back to second, go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 16, verse 18 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 16, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens, the deep and the earth, and all that therein is shall be moved when he shall visit. So now what I want to show you here is what we just read. It says the heaven of heaven. So I'm touching on the heavens. We, we dealt with the first heaven, which is our atmosphere. Then we dealt with the second heaven, which is deep space where the sun, moon, and stars are. Okay, that's the second heaven. All right, now we're going to deal with the third heaven. Okay, now before we get there, go back to Isaiah 66, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne. The what? And the earth is. The heaven is my throne. So this heaven that Isaiah is making reference to here is not talking about the first nor the second heaven. He's not talking about that. This heaven that Isaiah is referencing here is talking about the third heaven. Read that again. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye built unto me? And where is the place of my rest? Watch this. Now, I want to show you something. You see, in the book of Acts, he's giving some more details. Go back to Acts. Acts chapter 7, verse 49. Start at verse 48. Acts 7, 48. Read that again. Acts chapter 7, verse 48. Read. How be it, the Most High dwelleth, in, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. So now you see that part when it says, how be it, the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Who made this temple that's where the Lord is? He did. Read that again, verse 48. Acts chapter 7, verse 48. How be it, 
the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. So the most high God does not dwell in temples made with hands. The temple that was made with hands is the what? The mobile tabernacle that we, we were carrying when we came out of Egypt, when we were in the wilderness. You understand? And the temple that Solomon built. You see, that's the temple that was made with hands. But the, the one that the Lord, the one that the, where the Most High God is, is not the temple that was made with hands. Meaning what? By men. No, the Lord did that thing. Okay? What, what we have, the tabernacle that was carried by, the mobile tabernacle that was carried by the Levites and all that, that was the temple made with hands. The one that was built by King Solomon, that was the temple made with hands. But the one that is where the Lord is, that is not the temple that was made by man's hand. Now watch this. Give me 2 Corinthians now, chapter 12, verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. So the Apostle Paul now is telling the church of Corinth because the church of Corinth was very disrespectful to the Apostle Paul. So every now and again, he'd be getting on them. So now he's getting on the on the church of Corinth, but he's revealing certain mysteries. You understand? Read that again. Verse 1. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 1. It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. So now the Apostle Paul says, listen, I'm going to come, I'm going to bring some visions and revelations that I received from the Lord. Go ahead. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knew. Such an one holds up to the third heaven. Read that again, read that again, read it slow. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Mm -hmm. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. So now, what the Apostle Paul is revealing to us here is that I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Who is he talking about? He's talking about himself. You understand? He's talking about himself in the third person. You understand? Showing you he was moving in the spirit of Christ because that's how Christ spoke. In the third person. So he said, I knew a man about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knows. Such an such an one caught up to the third heaven. Because the apostle Paul went to the third heaven. He saw the visions of the third heaven where the most high God is. Some heavy stuff right here. Okay, go ahead. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Read. How that he was caught up into paradise. You see that part right there? How that he was caught up into paradise. Read on. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. You see that thing? So the things that he saw and heard, he says, it's not lawful for me to even repeat what I heard. It's against the law. You can't be saying stuff like that. Don't say nothing. That's why it says, which is unlawful for a man to utter. So where is this? This is not the second heaven. This is not deep space. No. This is the third heaven where the most high God is. Okay? So when people be asking, where is God? He's sitting on his throne in the heaven. Don't be saying third heaven and all that. But we understand that. Just keep it simple. Isaiah 66 and 1. Ecclesiastes 5 and 2. Simple. He's in heaven. That's where he's at. Okay? Somebody tries to be slick if they are humble. Then you can expound a little bit. But you don't be doing third heaven on the sea. You don't do stuff like that. But what I'm showing you here is People be asking that when, whenever I go to Isaiah 66 and 1, yeah, it's to keep it simple. On the seat. You see, on the seat, it's very simple to teach on the seat. In that, 
Deuteronomy 28, okay, the color in the Bible, the sin, how to repent. We keep it simple, straight to the point. When you come to class, we go over stuff like this. Okay, read that again, verse 4. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Mm -hmm. Is that it on that? Jump back up to verse 2 again. Verse 2. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, mm -hmm. or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. Is a such an one caught up to the third heaven. That's where the Lord is. Now go back to Isaiah 66 now. Isaiah 66 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? So now Isaiah was saying something heavy here. You understand? He just didn't explain it. He says, that says the Lord, the heaven is my throne. Now we know which heaven he's talking about. He's not talking about the sky. He's not talking about deep space. He's talking about the third heaven where the most high God is. Now watch this. There's something that Ezra said. Let's go to second Ezra. The angel was asking Ezra, Second Ezra, let me see. Second Ezra chapter. Let me see. Second Ezra chapter five. Let me see. Second Ezra chapter five. Yes, give me second Ezra chapter four. Let's start at verse. Second Ezra chapter four and verse five. Let's start there. You know what? Let's start at verse three. Start at verse three. Second Ezra chapter four, verse three. Then said I, yea, my Lord. And he answered me and said, I am sent to show thee three ways and to set forth three similitudes before thee. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Whereof, whereof, if thou canst declare me one, I will show thee also the way that thou desirest to see. And I will show thee. So the angel, this is the angel Uriel. He's talking to Ezra. He's showing Ezra a lot of stuff. Because Ezra was fasting, the Lord was revealing things unto Ezra. So now the angel is saying to Ezra, listen, I'm going to show you three simile truths. If you can answer me these three simile truths, then guess what? The things that you desire to know, I'm going to reveal them unto you. Read that part again. Read verse, read, read, read verse 3 again. Second Ezra chapter 4, verse 3. Then said I, yea, my Lord. And he answered me and said, I am sent to show thee three ways and to set forth three similitudes before thee. Uh -huh. Come on. Whereof, if thou canst declare me one, I will show thee also the way that thou desirest to see. And I will show thee from whence the wicked heart cometh. Come on, watch this. And I said, tell on my Lord. Then said he unto me, go thy way. Weigh me the weight of the fire. You see what he's saying? Oh, some, hold on. These are, my, these are hard questions here. It says, weigh me the weight of the fire. Who can do that? Nobody. Nobody can weigh the weight of fire. You see, the white man has been trying to do that for centuries. He can't do it. Okay. Go ahead. Go thy way. Weigh me the weight of the fire. Or measure me the blast of the wind. He says, measure me the blast of the wind, the blast of the wind, the speed of the wind, because the white man, he's got some machines, he's calculating wind speed and all of that. Listen, those are just, he's just, how did he know to calculate the speed of the wind? How does he know that? Because he's reading the Bible. You see, the white man is the devil. He's reading the Bible and he's realizing, wait a minute, yeah, because I used to watch this um, Formula One, okay? Formula One. You see when they're, before they drive and all, they'll be calculating the wind speed and all of that stuff. Yes. So they get those ideas from here. So the machines that the white man is using to be doing that, those are just estimates. It's not accurate. But he's trying. Go ahead. 
or call me again the day that is past. He says, call me again the day that is past. Meaning, bring back yesterday. Who can do that? Nobody can do that. So the white man is trying, though. That's why in his movies, he'd be, he'd be just be what? Subliminals. He'd be throwing subliminals in there. There's, there was a series called Fringe. I used to watch that show. There's a lot of stuff that is saying there. When now when I read the Bible, I'm like, you really, this man does not have that such an imagination. They get the stuff from the Bible. Especially the Apocrypha book and the book of Psalms and Ecclesiasticus and Wisdom of Solomon. Go ahead. Verse 6. Then answered I and said, What man is able to do that, that thou shouldest ask such things of me? You see what he's asking? Who can be able to do that stuff? Why are you asking me this stuff? Okay, go ahead. And he said unto me, If I should ask thee how great dwellings are in the midst of the sea, uh -huh. or how many springs are in the beginning of the deep, Read. or how many springs are above the firmament, mm -hmm. or, or which are the outgoings of paradise. Now stop right there. Stop right there. Now, I don't want to deal, I don't want to say a lot here, but the part I want to, I just want to deal with is that last part right there. Read verse 7 again. Second is chapter 4, verse 7. Read. And he said unto me, If I should ask thee how great dwellings are in the midst of the sea, or how many springs are in the beginning of the firmament, in the beginning of the deep, or how many springs are in, above the firmament, or which are the outgoings of paradise. So now I want to, I want to show you here. You see in verse 7 when it says, if I should ask thee how great dwellings are in the midst of the sea. Because, okay, when 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 the white man, you, you watch the Discovery Channel and all that, when the white man be going down there with his machines and all that, they can only get to a specific level at sea. You understand? There's multiple pockets in the sea where the white man has not gotten and there's no equipment that can get down there. That's what Ezra is telling us here. You understand? It says, how many springs are in the beginning of the deep? That took about what? Deep space. is also going into what? The waters, the sea. Or how many springs are above the firmament? That's where, that space. How many springs? Because what? Springs of what? Water. You understand? Watch the next part. Or which are the outgoings of paradise? Now, go back to Second Corinthians. We coming back here. Second Corinthians, okay. Second Corinthians chapter twelve. Read verse two and verse four. Second Corinthians chapter twelve, verse two. Mm -hmm. I knew a man in Christ about fourteen years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. Okay, read that part again. I'm sorry, read that again. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4. Verse 2. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. So the third heaven is what we are explaining here. When Isaiah is making reference to Isaiah 66 and 1. Okay? But he says he was caught up to the third heaven. Now jump down to verse 4 now. Watch this. Verse 4. How that he was caught up into paradise. He was what? How that he was caught up into paradise. How that he, the apostle Paul is letting you know in the visions and the revelations that the Lord revealed unto him is that he was caught up unto, into paradise. So the third heaven is called paradise. Okay, go ahead. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. You know when you watch the movie Avengers, the Avengers? When Thanos, um, during, you know, I think it's Infinity Stone, uh, Endgame, Thanos, he snapped his fingers and people was wiped off the earth. And then he decided he went to paradise. And when they were talking in the movie, when they're talking to one another, I think one, I think, I don't know if it's the daughter 
not the other one, not the, the one that died, but the one that looked like a robot. He, to he told them, listen, I know where, he, where he's born. He went to a place he called it the garden. That's what we're reading here. How that he was caught up into paradise and had unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Now, this paradise right here, which is the third heaven, where the most high God is, watch this. Go back to Second Exodus chapter 4, verse 30. Like I said, I don't want to go too deep on this. I just want to you know, paint a picture. Second Exodus 4, verse 30. Read that. Second Exodus chapter 4, verse 7. Go ahead. And he said unto me, If I should ask thee how great dwellings are in the midst of the sea, or how many springs are in the beginning of the deep, or how many springs are above the firmament, or which are the outgoings of paradise? You see that part when it says, which are the outgoings, outgoings of paradise, meaning what? You see that we have the first heaven, we have the second heaven, we have the third, which is called paradise. The outgoings of paradise is, when I'm in space, how do I know which direction to go to go to the third heaven? That's what, that's the, that's what the discussion is here. Guess who's trying to do that? Who's trying to figure that out? The white man is trying to figure that out. He's trying to figure out, okay, now I'm in space. Because think about it. I am in space. They say they want to create, they want to colonize Mars. That's what Elon Musk is doing. He wants to colonize Mars. Because when they colonize Mars, which is fairy tales, you know what they are planning to do? To go to the third heaven. You see this white man? He reads the Bible. But he paints a picture in the media that he doesn't believe it. Oh, no, he believes the Bible, all right? You understand? So he says, which are the outgoings of paradise? Read verse 8 now. Watch this. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. Peradventure, thou would say unto me, I never went down into the deep. That's the, that's the, sea. the sea. I never went down into the deep. That's the sea. Go ahead. No, as yet into hell. That's still going making them to the sea. Go ahead. Neither did I ever climb up into heaven. You see what he's saying? Neither, neither did I ever climb up into heaven. Guess who did? Guess who did that? Give me X1 and 9 now. Watch this. X chapter 1, verse 9. Go ahead. When he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. You see that thing? A cloud received him out of their sight. That's a chariot. It took Christ. He was beamed up. He went into a chariot. Where did he go? He climbed into heaven. Which heaven? The third heaven. So Christ knows the outgoings of paradise. Okay? He knows the outgoings. Because he was, the cloud took him. In the first heaven, then he went, he passed, he went to the second heaven. Then he knew how to go to the third heaven because he knows the doorway to God. He's just trying to do that thing. Now, I'm going to end the class right here. Now, give me that next, next break, break now. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, Ye to show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that class. Hope to the most high. Hope to the most high.